Uh, if anyone says that John 8, 58 should be translated, before Abraham was born, was born, I have, that is silly and shows that that person is basically an ignoramus. Even the Jehovah Witnesses do not render ego I me as I have. They render it as I have been. So if Osama is telling you that the words ego I me, ego I me should be I have, that's even more proof that he has no business doing apologetics. Because even Joe's witnesses will tell you that the phrase should be rendered as I have been. I have been. Alright? I have been. They don't even say I have. If you read their translation of John 8.58, it's I have been. Not I have. I don't know of any serious <laughs> uh, Greek scholar or even anti-Trinitarian apologist. I don't know of any anti-Trinitarian apologist who wants to be taken seriously. I don't know of any one of them who's ever said that it should be before Abraham was born, I have. They'll tell you I have been. Now let me explain to you why the Jehovah's Witnesses like to uh, use that translation. I hope I don't confuse you. This is why I'm pausing. This is why I'm hesitating because again I'm no Greek scholar. I'm a student of Greek scholars and I've stu studied their arguments so I have a little bit of an idea of what they're talking about. But how many of you have heard of what, uh, extension from past idiom? Extension from past idiom. Also know, known as present of past action still in progress, known as PPA. Present of past action still in progress. What does that mean? This is a linguistic feature, and not just in Greek, right? But it's a linguistic feature in Greek where you use a present tense to describe an action that has, that has taken place in the past and continues to the present moment. Is everyone with me? You use a present tense verb to describe an action that started in the past, but it's continuing up to that present moment in which you're writing or speaking, right? So this is known as present, notice the present tense, of a past action still in progress. Are you with me? So, Joe's witnesses believe that in the context, Jesus is using the present tense to speak of an action that has started at some point in the past and has continued to the present moment of when he speaks, when he's speaking, right? You got it. Do you understand what that means, right? Does you understand what this linguistic feature means? It's also known as extension from past idiom. A present tense verb is used to describe an event, an action that began in the past, that started at some past point, but that action has been continuously going on till that present moment. What's the point of the Jehovah Witness? Uh, no, I don't know what you mean by eternal now. This is where you're confusing me. An action in the past can be eternal or it could have, have some starting point in the past. It could have started in the past, but it continues to the present. Oh, you're talking about I, me as a timeless. Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses is disagreeing with you. So let's hold off whether ego I, me is referring to eternal existence, timeless existence. Let's first address their point. What's their point? Well, isn't Jesus talking about his existence, right? Which started at some point in the past, prior to the birth of Abraham and continues to the present moment? Isn't Jesus explaining to the Jews that his existence actually precedes that of Abraham? So he's existed in the past, up to the present. Isn't that Jesus' point in the context? That's what the Jehovah Witness will tell you. The Jehovah Witness is saying, isn't Jesus talking about his existence, right? Which started at some point in the past, right? Prior to Abraham, and continue to that present moment. Isn't that what Jesus is saying? Yeah, I could have seen Abraham because I was there even before Abraham and I continue to be to the present moment. They go a lot of the context that shows us that Jesus is using the present tense, I me, as a present of past action still in progress. You with me? Are you with me? Now you guys are with me, right? You're following with me so far? How do we address that? How do we address that? Okay. 
How do we address it? Now, on the surface level, they seem to have a point, don't they? On the surface level, they seem to have a point because Jesus is not simply talking about a current situation or a current action. He's actually talking about him seeing Abraham because he was around even before Abraham. So his existence, right, starts at some point in the past and continues to the present moment of when Jesus uttered those words. So in the context, it seems to be a PPA, present of past action still in progress, right? It seems to be that, right? That's why you have some translations even translating it this way. There are at least there's at least one translation I know of. And I have to look at look for it. So don't ask me which one, but I remember reading one, and Lord willing I'll find it, where it says, Before Abraham was born, I have been and I am. I have been and I am. Because the translators understood Jesus is talking about a past existence that continues to the present moment. So it's a deficiency of the English language because our language is deficient. We can't capture the full meaning, the full orb of what Jesus is saying. Because he is affirming his past existence. Is he not? Because he's answering the objection. Look, man, you're not even 50 years old. How is it possible that you could have seen Abraham? And he says, well, let me tell you why and how it's possible. Unlike Abraham who came into being, I've been there even before he was born, and I continue to be. See, that's the point. So how do you translate the text to capture that those nuances, right? Because Jesus is affirming, yeah, I was there even before Abraham came to be, and continue to exist at the present time. So how, how do you best capture that? The point that Jesus is making. If you say, before Abraham was, was born, I am, in fact, most people, let me prove this to you, most people don't even know the context of that statement. If you ask people, show me where Jesus claims to be God, they'll tell you John 8, 58, before Abraham was born, I am. If you ask them, what was the context that led Jesus to utter those words, most of them don't have a clue. Because the, the only thing that they use that passage for, for, for is to show Jesus is claiming to be the I am of Exodus 3.14. See, in Exodus 3.14, Yahweh says I am, and Jesus says the I am. That's all they know. But there's a context in John 8.58, right, folks? The context is Jesus is answering the objection. You're not yet 50 years old, yet you have seen Abraham, and Jesus' response is, yes, I have seen Abraham. Do you know why? I was there before Abraham came into being and continued to exist to the present time. That's the full gist of Jesus' words. Now, how do you capture that in English? Now, in light of what I just gave you, in light of what I just said, that's the full gist. That's the nuance or the nuances of Jesus' statements. How would you translate that in English? Would you translate it before Abraham was born, I am? That John 8.40. Or would you translate in such a way to capture both the past and present elements of his statement? Both the past and present elements of his statement. How would you translate it? If you're translating the verse to capture both the past and present elements in Jesus' words, then you can't merely translate it as, Before Abraham was born, I am. Nor can you merely translate it as, before Abraham was born, I have been. I have been refers to the past. I am refers to the present. So if you want to capture both, because Jesus' words includes both his past existence and his present existence, because his existence in the past is continuous, it continues to exist to that present moment, then how would you translate John 8, 58, folks? Any takers? Put it in the text. So is Jesus affirming his timelessness or affirming that he could have seen Abraham because he continues to exist to the present time? Now, Blueprint, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just bringing that up as food for thought because that's the Jehovah Witness argument. The Jehovah Witness argument is that Jesus is referring to both past and present action. And therefore, any translation that renders ego I mean must capture the past and present elements 
of his words or, or they're doing injustice to the text. Priceman says, always been, always will be. I have been and I am. Hmm. Now that's their objection. Are you ready for a response? Are you ready for a response from the, the Trinitarian side? And by the way, there are Trinitarians that would accept what I just said. There are Trinitarians who love Jesus Christ and believe He's the God-man and worship Him as the God-man, who will tell you that the JWs are right, actually. They'll say, yeah, they're right. Jesus is, is affirming both His past existence as well as His present existence. His past existence, which continues to the present. There are Trinitarians who would agree with that. However, let me deal with some of the objections. Are you guys ready or am I boring you guys? Are you guys fully awake, attentive and alert? By the grace and power of the Lord Jesus Christ, are you ready? Okay, let's deal. Let me first deal with the connection to Exodus 3:14. Let's first deal with the connection to Exodus 3:14 because most Christians, if you ask them, show me where Jesus claims to be God, either they'll go to John 10:30, I and the Father are one, or Jesus says, "Before Abraham was born, I am." And they go, "You see, he he claims to be the I am, which is the name of God in Exodus 3:14, right?" How many of you? How many of you have heard that argument? How many of you use that argument, right? The connection between Jesus as I am in John 8:58, with Yahweh saying He's the I am in Exodus 3:14. How many have heard that argument? How many of you have used that argument? Okay. Now, a sharp anti-Trinitarian is hoping you'll use that as an objection, because a sharp anti-Trinitarian will then try to school you. Here's why. Let's go to Exodus 3.14. Let me show you why. Exodus 3.14. Let's take it step by step. If Millie was here, she'd record this and put it on YouTube for the benefit of others. Especially the benefit of you guys here to re-listen re to this. Because the more we hear something by the grace of the Lord Jesus, the better we'll be, we will be able to be to absorb it. As the Lord loosens my tongue, anoints me to speak truth clearly for His glory in Jesus' name. Okay. Now, the Hebrew phrase is Ahyeh, Ashir, Ahyeh. I am who I am. Ahyeh, Ashir, Ahyeh. And he says, tell them I am has sent me to you. It's Ahyeh. Now, Ahyeh is actually future tense. It's I will be. Now, here's the tricky thing about the Hebrew language. Just because a tense is future doesn't mean it's being used in relation to a future act. In the Hebrew language, you can use a future tense a verb for a present reality, for a present action, for a present situation. Likewise, in the Hebrew language, you can use a past tense verb for a present reality, a present situation, or for a future event. Are you with me? So just because the tense of the verb is future doesn't mean that in the context it's referring to a future action. Therefore, although Ahyeh is I will be, get any good commentary, they'll tell you it's future tense, I will be, right? That doesn't mean that in the context it's being used in reference to a future act, a future event. It can be referring to a present reality. That's why they translate it as I am. However, because it can be translated I will be, scholars are divided, with some saying that in the context, God is not saying I am, God is saying I will be. In fact, do me a favor, Blue, Pe Blue Penny. I believe the ESV has a note indicating that the phrase, Ehye, can also be rendered as I will be. Do you have that note? If so, post it for us. Because the NIV has, has a note. The NIV has a note telling us that the phrase can actually mean I will be what I will be. Well, let me find it for you if you can't find it. One second, let me see. Let me go online. Do you see your note? Okay, he saw it, but hold on. Let me get it here. Let me get you the link. Let's see. Yep, here it goes. Blue letter, uh, BibleGateway.com, not Blue Letter Bible. BibleGateway.com, go there. You got to make sure that you've, you've got the notes and then the footnotes all intact. Where it says page options. Click on page op options and click on footnotes, cross-references, verse numbers, headings, Reddit, letter, etc. Where it says page options. And if you put page options, you'll see the letter A and the footnote that says this. This is what you're going to find.
That's what you're going to find, okay? I think it's lowercase. I'm sorry. Yeah, lowercase a. My, my bad. Here is a evangelical Trinitarian translation that tells you in their note that the Hebrew can also be rendered as I will be what I will be. So, should it be rendered present tense, I am, even though it's a future tense verb? Or should it be rendered future tense, I will be? And how do we know? Now, what's the implication? What implication does this have on connecting it with the words of Christ? Well, if the context shows that Ahia should be, I will be, then there is no connection with Jesus, because Jesus says, I am, ego, I me. Whereas here, God says, I will be. So what's the connection? There is none, right? If it's future tense, there is no connection, correct? Everyone with me? Do you see what the anti-Trinitarian is trying to do? The anti-Trinitarian is trying to get you to see and acknowledge that the, the verse in Exodus 3, 3.14 can be rendered future tense, I will be. Therefore, because it can be rendered in future tense, you cannot conclusively connect Jesus' words in John 8.58 with Exodus 3.14. Yes, there are some who would agree with you it should be present tense, but the tense is future. It's a future tense verb. And they'll argue that in the context, it's better to render it as future tense, I will be. And because of that, there is no connection with what Jesus is saying. So there goes your proof text, right? Now, as Christians, should we view the passage as future tense, I will be, or present tense, I am? Well, that's a hard one. Do you know why it's a hard one? Because you can make a strong case in the context, it should be future tense. Do you know why? Because of Exodus 3.12. Exodus 3.12. What does God say to Moses in Exodus 3.12? He said, but I will be with you. Notice his promise. I will be with you. Future. And so someone will tell you in the context, because God is promising Moses, he'll be with him to do everything he's promised. It's better to render Ahie as future tense. After all, there is a present tense in Hebrew. Anoki, which is I am, or Anihu. Anihu is used in Isaiah. Anihu means I am. Anoki means I am, right? So the author could have used a present tense if he wanted to affirm that God is timeless. He is the I am. He is. Present tense because he transcends time. Right? He could have used Anihu as Isaiah does. Right? Anoki as Isaiah does. In fact, let me double check. Moses himself uses Anihu. Let me just double check real quick. I don't want to go by memory. We don't want to go by memory, right? We want to make sure that we're handling the text correctly. Let's see. Let me just check. I'm going to get you the interlinear so you can check it for yourself. What did Jesus say? He said, Ani who? The Garden of Gethsemane? You're confusing me, uh, Chris. Are you talking about in John, John 18 where he says, Whom do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth? Ego Aimi? And they fell backwards? Okay, yeah, you confused me for a minute. One second. Yep, here. Guys, do me a favor. Go to this interlinear. Well, we know in the Greek he says, Ego Aimi. Go to Deuteronomy 32 39. I gave you the interlinear. This is Moses. Moses wrote Deuteronomy. He also wrote Exodus. This is what we believe. We believe he wrote it by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now go there. Right? You're going to see that Yahweh says, Ani, Ani who? Ani, Ani who? Now you're going to have to read it from right to left. Because it's in Hebrew. And the Hebrew goes from right to left. Ani means I. Ani who means I, he. With M implied okay what's my point if Moses wanted to make it crystal clear that he was speaking of God's timeless existence that he is I am timeless one then he could have used anihu right which is present tense because he does use it elsewhere right go see there go to that link and see it for yourselves okay does everyone see that in Deuteronomy 32 39 Moses uses the present tense, Ani, Ani, who, I, I, he, with am implied, I am he. So do you see that not only Isaiah, but Moses himself uses the present tense, Ani, who, Ani, who.